Hey guys, I just want to send a quick video to you guys. Uh, first, want to say, Lisa and I miss you guys so much. It is so weird to be apart from family when we've been so close for so long. I seriously pray for you, think about you guys all the time. And because everything is so crazy right now, I so want to be there. Um, but I thought, well, at least I could just send you a quick video and just share some thoughts that God's put on my heart uh, for the church during this time. It was, it was kind of crazy, like three weeks ago when we were getting ready to leave, I got the kids together and just, just asked the family how they were feeling. And, you know, Zeke and Ellie and, and Claire were talking about how they were, you know, a little sad to be, you know, leaving their friends. Um, they weren't really scared about going into the, you know, into Hong Kong with the virus. Um, they're excited about the adventure. And, you know, so everyone had these mixed emotions. And then Silas, our five-year-old, we're like, hey, what, what do you think, Silas? You excited to go to Hong Kong? And he just starts crying. And he goes, I'm just so sad that all these people are dying in China. And it was like this moment where you're just like, whoa, like he's actually the only one that has the right perspective right now. We're, like we're thinking about ourselves and, and how it feels going into this place. Are we afraid? Are we this or that? But he kind of just brought us to this moment of, man, I naturally default to myself and I don't think about what's going on. And, and, and during this time, it's crazy. It's so easy for us to lose what we're supposed to be all about, which is to be these people who are loving, that are concerned that hundreds of people every day are dying and many headed to an eternity apart from Christ. And I thought, man, I used to be like this in high school. I remember when I first believed, I would just look at all my friends and I would just be so concerned about their eternal salvation. But sometimes the longer you're in church, you can almost get sidetracked by other things and, and believing they're the most important. And so my prayer for you guys, number one, is that you stay loving, that that you, during this time, that you really be thinking, God, I love you. What do you want me to do out of love for you? And, and to be looking at the others around you in love and going, God, how can I serve these people? Because this is, this is one of the greatest opportunities we've ever had as a church where people are open to talking about serious things, life and death things, and, and suddenly we're no longer in control. So man, I understand it is crazy, but don't lose your love. And secondly, I would say, don't lose your joy. Like the Bible commands us, Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I know it's a weird time where you, you can't gather together as the big church and, and we're even trying to break up the churches into smaller clusters and you can find some disappointment. We can, we go, oh, I wish it was like this. I wish it was that. But man, don't stop rejoicing of the fact that right now, man, you can be alone in your room, even if you're isolated, and be in the presence of Almighty God, like you and Him in a room together, alone with the Creator of the universe. Like, we have to rejoice in that always. And, and not just that, but the joy of, man, this is what we've been talking about for years now, that we don't need the giant crowds or anything else. If I just have a couple of people in the room with me and we take of communion, like, like there's a way in which Christ is present, like none other, and we have this right 
Man, some of my most meaningful times of communion have been just with the family or with two buddies. And we're just reminding each other, man, this is the body and blood of Christ. And we're looking at each other. I remember one time just with Justin and Al, it was just like the three of us. And we had this communion. And, and Justin's like, man, I had to open my eyes because I could have sworn Christ was right there in front of me. Like I could reach out and touch him. The real presence of Christ. Like, are you still finding so much joy in that? Like, hey, let's get even deeper during this time and let's find joy in this. And, and finally, I just want to say, don't lose your peace. Um, man, we are people that are supposed to be fearless just absolutely fearless man the number one command the most oft repeated command in scripture is fear not man i think of christ's words in john 14 when he says peace i leave with you my peace i give to you i do not give to you like the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid in my father's house are many rooms and if it were not so i would have told you and i'm going there to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come back and take you to be with me so you can be with me where i am Man, this is, this is the crux of everything we believe is that I don't have to fear death. Like, this is the way Christ wants me to live. Like, what do I have to fear? Like, if I die, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Man, when have you ever feared gain? Like getting into the presence of God, I hope you have this peace with you. I mean, we have the peace that he says, if you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things shall be added to you. So I walk around going, man, what could go wrong with me today? Like, I know him, I don't fear death. He's gonna take care of me while I'm on this earth. And when it's my time to go, it's my time to go. You guys, this is at the core. The, the resurrection of Christ took away all of that fear. So man, I sure hope that right now you are so fearless for yourself. And if not, man, that's the first thing you gotta do is get alone with God and say, God, why this fear? You don't want me living like this. And so please, this is the time where we thank God and go, God, it is so good that I am with you and nothing, nothing can separate me from your love. Like I'm loved by you and nothing can separate this. No disease, no death, no life, death, angels, principalities, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Thank you, God. Thank you that I can be alone with you. Thank you that you dwell in me. Thank you that I'm not alone. Thank you I don't have to worry about the future. Man, this is the attitude we have as believers right now. And, and I, I would warn you during this time, like I, I see a lot of people going, man, I'm just gonna podcast, I'm gonna isolate. And my fear during this time for the US, for Hong Kong, anywhere is, we can get so accustomed to being isolated and that we just go, man, I'm just gonna keep doing this. This is great, I'm gonna stay at home and be by myself. But you guys know that is not the church that Christ wanted. He wanted such intimacy between his children, just like every parent does, where you just want them to be this bond, this inseparable bond. And so, man, we can do all things through Christ. That means even during this time, as you guys are on lockdown, to say, God, we can get closer to each other somehow, whether it's through technology or whatever else, when we will figure out a way because there needs to be this resilience in us as believers. And I think that is what the world and the church is being shown right now, is how vulnerable, how volatile we are, that one little thing could mess things up. But man, you guys know this is what we've been working for for seven years. 
I, and it's kind of crazy that for seven years we've been preaching, come on, you guys, we've got to get ready. There's going to come a day when we can't get in these big gatherings, and there's going to come a day when you're going to need to know how to buy yourself, no matter where you are, that you can thrive in your walk with God and that you can gather with other believers and you can build each other up. I mean, that's what we're preparing for. Like I said, it's like, it's like our children. Like I, I want my children by the time they're 18, I don't have to worry about them anymore. I train them up. They can go anywhere. They can walk with the Lord. They can lead others to the Lord. Man, they know how to have fellowship with others. They can create their own gatherings. And that's been our heart for you guys as elders to the church is there's going to come a day. There is going to come a day when we won't have the luxury of all the leaders being together with all of the people. And you need to be ready for that. It's kind of crazy that I'm preaching that for seven years. And then two weeks after I leave, you're living it. And the whole country is having to live that. But it's, I believe it's God's grace on us to show us Man, am I prepared? Have I lost my love, my joy, my peace? This is the fruit of the Spirit. Man, you guys, take advantage of this time. Don't miss this opportunity. This is one of our greatest opportunities for reaching out to a lost world and showing them that we haven't lost our love, joy, and peace. Even at this moment, the enemy can't take that away from us. We love the Lord Jesus Christ and His church is alive and well. I so miss you guys. I seriously love you guys. And I'm so excited that so many of you have been prepared for this. So take courage and I can't wait to see you guys again.